I, I have got a question about not blaming and not complaining. And the, the question is double. One is that I'm thinking about something that somebody did to me that had serious consequences for my profession and maybe continues to have and absolutely with no base for it, just I don't want to qualify it. That's one of the things. And the, the second side, being a psychotherapist, I encourage people to talk about whatever bothers them, what the problem is, what they think the problem is. And the fact that they talk about it, it's already, it's just, it's letting it go. Rather than holding it inside, so it is a form of complaint, if you like, or blame, or maybe I misunderstood you. Actually, talking about uh, karma is not necessarily blaming or complaining. I did not link the two together. That's important. The fact that you got that traumatic experience because somebody is uh, blaming you for something through your professional career, uh, that uh, has a kind of galvanizing effect. But originally, I did not mean that just verbalizing things or simply being in treatment during therapy, these projections happen. But since people usually have some I, my, me, they cannot objectively relay their experience because if they were fully clear, they would not go for therapy. They could process it themselves. So in any kind of rendering, there is an element of projection sometimes complaint or directly blaming when the mind is very infantile, then the therapist acts as a parent. And you know from your own profession how strong the projection is from an infantile mind to a projected parent. And uh, from my own profession as a Zen teacher, when people come to the interview room, it's never therapy because I'm not qualified and skilled and educated as a therapist but I'm a reflectionist. So I help them reflect. And from the Zen angle of uh, this clear moment teaching, I help them reflect. And I experience pretty much the same thing, projections over projections over projections. But me as a Zen teacher, I'm in a kind of easier situation because I can directly point to mind. That's something I'm qualified or even required to do. Mm -hmm. And as such, I can always separate subject and object. I said, is this you talking or your karma manifesting? So I have a chance to disambiguate the two. And in that way, I'm pretty sure you find your own way to separate subject and object in a way that the person sees the weapon in his or her hand that wants to hurt you. And you can say, you are not your weapon. You are not your karma. You can put this all down. And I love you, and I trust you, but I don't trust your weapon. I don't believe your karma. I know this is not you. So this takes a tremendous amount of courage, and first and foremost, that same alchemical process within you, yourself too. So if you did that within your own heart, you can do that with others. But if not, then the first question, the first issue that you mentioned can occur and reoccur, that somebody traumatizes you through the therapeutic process and blames you and complains and maybe complains to others. It's pretty hard to wash yourself clean after such complaint happens, no matter how accurate your notes are, no matter how professional you are. And in that way, I suggest two things. One is do some damage control if necessary. Sometimes you have to go for supervision, sometimes you have to talk to colleagues, sometimes you have to go to the right board and write the right letters to kind of bring yourself clean from any objective accusations. So if you make your case, then there's a basis for later uh, clarification process. If you don't, then uh, you just stay quiet and let the others or the other you know, put forward their opinion. And the second is the inside work. And that inside work is gain energy from the trauma. Because that itself is not you. It hit you. It may have harmed you. But it's not you. 
So in that sense, try to utilize the energy which is in that traumatic experience for your own inner transformation and progress on the path. Now that doesn't work without meditation or some kind of um, uh, ego cleansing process. Mm -hmm. Because if you are holding on to, I am right, he or she is wrong, you will always traumatize yourself. You will always put the dagger into your own heart again and again and again, because you will never be justified from the outside. So that's why Zen says, do not follow the mind which is split into right and wrong. See cause and effect very clearly. Now, in an identity, there is a tremendous amount of energy. So use that by saying, I am not hurt. This energy exploded. It bruised my emotions. It confused my thinking. It may have damaged me physically. That's not my true nature. That energy is released when you say that and you live that. And then you can do something with it. And the hardest is to transform that back as a form of loving kindness and compassion towards the person or persons who hurt you. It may take years, but holding on to the past and holding on to the suffering and traumatic experience is blocking your own way. Hmm. So if you don't want to block your own way, if you don't want to get caught up in the self-justification process, in the projection, blaming, etc., etc., because it never ends. The circle never ends. But when you hit the center of the circle, explodes, disappears. And in the very center of every thought process, there is a chunk of identity. There's a chunk of I in the very center. And when you take that I, my, me away, the rest of the circle, the perimeter, is gone. Okay? I, I, I think I understand what you are saying. And... I, I am not trying to justify myself to someone who could take this person seriously, which I'm not absolutely sure they do. And I have tried to use kindness with the person, and there is a, a, a start of a shift. I did it instinctively. I didn't know that. I didn't do it to make her change her opinion about me. I just, I just felt... I give up. I don't want to have a fight. I don't want to continue the antagonism. And so, yeah, in a way. Well, it looks like a good start, but don't do it too soon. Sometimes there is an end to therapy and then some gestation process for some new sessions. Uh, we call that detachment. Because when you do not detach, then the person doesn't realize uh, where his or her projections come from. And if she, you mentioned her, if she is still very antagonistic, but you are not, you lowered your weapon, but she didn't. So then it takes a tremendous amount of courage and stamina to withstand all the bruises and projections and blames and whatnot, mm. and respond with kindness. So uh, why did Napoleon lose? Not because Kutuzov put millions of soldiers before Napoleon. He put a few tens of thousands, but what conquered Napoleon was the Russian winter and distance and sickness and lack of uh, supplies. So the moment Napoleon reaches Moscow, he believes he has victory. And the moment that he realizes they have to spend the winter because it's too late to go back, he knows he has lost, but he still couldn't give up. Give up. He, he still couldn't say. And then, when Moscow's burning and there's nothing and no one to help him and there's no one to be found, and then when he starts the way back a few months later, scorched earth tactics. And that's how they won. And just before they cross the border to Poland, final blow, and everything's gone. Just a few thousand people made it. And they started out as 800,000. So you can do that to people with compassion to let them kind of expand their energy somewhere else. Let them play out their karma in other environments. 
And then with that experience, they can even come back to you with a thankful mind. That you are the one who understands them and everybody else keeps judging them because they did so much damage. Okay? So it's not inhuman to deny energy from those who want to hurt you. Deny yours for a time. And when they recognize that they have no other relationship who can understand them, who can really appreciate them, and the whole, their whole world is broken, then there is some transformation inside. And then they may come back to you and say, okay, now please help me. Now I understand better. Okay?